Diesel reaction is the cycloaddition reaction between a diene and a dienophile to yield a cyclohexene ring. In this video, we'll talk about the reaction mechanism and the frontier molecular orbital description. So stay tuned till the end. Right, so a Diels-Elder reaction is a cycloaddition reaction. And according to Woodward Hoffman rules, it is known as a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. The reaction takes place between a diene, as you can see here. This is our diene, which has a conjugated system and it reacts with a dienophile. A dienophile is usually an alkene and the term dienophile means diene loving. So this dienophile or the alkene reacts with the diene to produce the cyclohexene ring. This reaction is a pericyclic reaction and if you know about pericyclic reactions, these are reactions which involves the transfer of electrons in a concerted way going through a cyclic transition state to yield the product. Let's see how the mechanism works. So here is our diene and it is going to react with the dienophile or the alkene. A prerequisite for this reaction to proceed is that the diene has to be in a S cis configuration or in other words it should be in cisoid configuration. This is 1,3-butadiene and you know that 1,3-butadiene can also be in this form and this is the transoid form of 1,3-butadiene. This transoid 1,3-butadiene will never react with the dienophile to give this cyclohexene ring. So if the diene or this 1,3-butadiene is in cisoid configuration, it will then react with this dienophile to give the product. So electrons are shifted or transferred in this manner, going through a cyclic transition state, which would look like this. So we have a new bond formation between this carbon and this carbon. So this bond will be in the process of formation in the transition state. We have a double bond between these two carbons of the dienophile out of which one of the pi bond will be broken. So we can draw that pi bond in this form which is in the process of breaking and then we have a new bond formation which is in the process as yet. So we draw it in this form and then this double bond is converted into a single bond and this single bond is converted into a double bond and this double bond is converted into a single bond. So we have this transition state and it's a cyclic transition state that ultimately produces this cyclohexene ring. So it's a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Why it is known as a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction? Because you know that you can see that this dienophile, sorry, this diene has 4 pi electrons and the dienophile has 2 pi electrons which are involved in this reaction. So the sigma electrons are not part of this reaction they are they do not move or they do not change their place only the pi electrons are involved and that is why it is known as a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction now you also know that pericyclic reactions or the reactions that go through a cyclic transition state they may be carried out under thermal or photochemical conditions. And these Woodward Hoffman rules tell us whether the reaction is allowed thermally or photochemically. And this can be explained by considering the frontier molecular orbitals of 
the reacting species. So according to Woodward Hoffman rules, this Diels-Alder reaction or this 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction is allowed thermally. And why it is allowed thermally, that we will see in a moment when we will consider their frontier molecular orbitals. So let's learn how we can draw the frontier molecular orbitals for these reacting species. First, we will draw the molecular orbitals for diene. As you can see that we have four pi electrons and it's a conjugated system. So this pi electron density is distributed among all these four carbon atoms of the diene. And this leads to the formation of four molecular orbitals. And these four orbitals can be drawn on an energy scale in this form. So these are the four p orbitals that are involved in the formation of uh, the pi bonds in the diene. And you know that these dumbbell shaped orbitals, they have different wave functions. So we can draw them as shaded or unshaded lobes to differentiate be between them. So in the lowest energy molecular orbital, you will see that all the orbitals have similar wave functions on same side of this sigma framework. So you can see all the shaded lobes of the p orbitals, they are uh, above this sigma framework and all the unshaded lobes are below the sigma framework. And there is no nodal plane in this molecular orbital which we can write as psi1. This is psi2 and this will have one nodal plane. By the way, you can learn how to draw these molecular orbitals from another video, the link to which you can find here. So this psi2 looks like this. And then we have psi3, which has two nodal planes. One is here and the other one is here. So this shaded part is up. This shaded part is down. This shaded part is down. And then this shaded part is up. And then the last one that is psi4 would look like this, which has actually three nodal planes. So the shaded part up and the shaded part down, and then the shaded part up and the shaded part down. So we have these four molecular orbitals of the diene. And you can see that there are four pi electrons. So we can start distributing these electrons from starting from the lowest energy orbital in this fashion. So you can see that two of the molecular orbitals, they are filled and two are empty. So in this diagram, you can see that this psi 2 is the highest occupied molecular orbital of the diene or in other words psi 2 is the homo of the diene All right and uh, now let's draw the molecular orbitals for the dienophile and as you can see there are two pi electrons one pi bond so we will have two molecular orbitals for the dienophile, the first one, the lowest energy orbital, will have the shaded parts on the same side of the sigma framework. And the second one, the higher energy orbital, will have the shaded parts on opposite sides of the sigma frameworks because there is a nodal plane. So these are the two molecular orbitals of the dienophile and because there are two electrons so we can fill them in psi 1 all right so the highest occupied molecular orbital of the dienophile is the psi 1 
and psi 2 is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the dinophile and this in the diene this psi 3 is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital now in a normal Diels-Elder reaction this diene acts as the electron donor and dienophile acts as the electron acceptor and this is known as a normal electron demand Diels-Elder reaction and according to this normal electron demand Diels-Elder reaction the homo of the diene will interact or react with the lomo of the dienophile right so you already know that the bond can be formed between orbitals having similar wave functions or you can say that the shaded part of one orbital will interact or overlap with the shaded part of another orbital or the unshaded part of one orbital will interact with the unshaded part of another orbital to form a bond so the wave functions must be similar and this steel zelda reaction takes place superficially which means that the elect the orbitals they do not rotate or change their orientation during this interaction so in a normal electron demand deals and a reaction the homo of the diene will interact with the lomo of the dienophile and we will see in a moment why this reaction is thermally allowed so under thermal conditions psi 2 is the homo of the diene and psi 2 is the lomo of the dienophile so under thermal conditions and in a normal electron demand Diels-Alder reaction psi 2 of the diene will interact with the psi 2 of the dienophile so let's see how this works so let's draw the psi 2 of the diene which is having one nodal plane and it looks like this and this is the homo of the diene and this will interact with the lomo of the dienophile and remember for interaction or overlap of the orbitals the, the wave functions must be similar so let's draw the lomo of the dienophile which has one nodal plane so this shaded part is down and this shaded part is up don't worry about the uh, the signs like i have drawn the left one here uh, in this form and this left one is there so you can always rotate it and draw it uh, the way you want it to be so if you look at this reaction here uh, this interaction takes place between this carbon and this carbon like the terminal carbons of the diene and the two carbons of the dienophile so these are the terminal carbons this one and this one these will interact with these two carbons and as i told you earlier that the lobes must have similar wave functions to interact so you can see that this unshaded part is right in front of the unshaded part of the lomo of the dienophile so it can interact easily and on the right hand side you can see that the shaded parts are also in front of each other so they can easily form a bond this is under thermal conditions and you can see that the wave functions allow the overlap of the orbitals and the formation of a bond and that is why we say that Diels-Elder reaction or this 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction is thermally allowed let's see what will happen if we carry out this reaction under photochemical conditions so under photochemical conditions one of the electrons will be excited from the psi 2 of the diene to psi 3 of the diene so psi 2 will have one electron and psi 3 will have one electron and now we have a new homo 
and this homo is now the side 3 of the diene. And as I told you earlier that this is an, in a normal electron demand Diels-Elder reaction, the homo of the diene interacts with the lomo of the dienophile. So if we can draw the homo of the diene under photochemical conditions, so this is the homo of the diene under photochemical conditions and it will interact with the lomo of the dienophile. And this lomo will look like this. The lomo is still the psi2 of the dienophile. And now you can see the, the wave functions of the orbitals as you can see here they are similar so this side can interact but on the left hand side the unshaded part is in front of the shaded part so this interaction is not feasible according to quantum mechanics so this interaction is not feasible and the reaction will not proceed so under photochemical conditions this 4 plus 2 cycloaddition in a normal electron demand is not allowed. Okay, now let's see what an inverse electron demand Diels-Elder reaction means. So in an inverse electron demand Diels-Elder reaction, the homo of the dienophoil will react with the lomo of the diene to form this cyclohexane, cyclohexane ring. So again, it will be allowed thermally. So under thermal conditions, psi 3 of the diene is the LOMO. And under the same conditions, psi 1 is the HOMO of the dienophile. So let's draw the orbitals again. This time, this time around, the HOMO of the dienophile will interact with the LOMO of the diene. So the LOMO of diene looks like this. The shaded part is up. It has two nodes. So this shaded part is down. This shaded part is down. And this shaded part is up. So you can see that the terminal carbons have similar lobes on one side of the this sigma framework. So this is the LOMO of the diene. And this is an inverse electron demand Diels-Elder reaction. So the LOMO will, of the diene will interact with the HOMO of the dienophile. And the HOMO has similar lobes on each side of the sigma framework. And this is the HOMO of the dienophile. And now you can see that on both sides, similar lobes are in front, and so they can interact easily, and this reaction is also possible and feasible. So both normal electron demand and inverse electron demand Diels-Elder reactions are thermally allowed reactions. But under photochemical conditions, the HOMO and the LOMO will change and that will have an effect on the overall outcome of the reaction or in other words the reaction is forbidden it is not allowed so in this video you just saw a very simple or the simplest example of a Diels-Elder reaction but it's not always the same these dienes and the dienophiles may have certain groups attached to them in different molecules and they can undergo Diels-Elder reaction. So in a normal electron demand Diels-Elder reaction in which the HOMO of the diene is required, if electron donating groups are attached to the diene and electron withdrawing groups are attached to the dienophile, this normal electron demand diels reaction will proceed more efficiently. But for an inverse electron demand diels reaction to go to completion, then we must have electron withdrawing groups attached to the diene and electron donating groups attached to the dienophile. 
and that will allow an inverse electron demand Diels-Alder reaction to go to completion. But under normal circumstances, this diene is always an electron-rich molecule. So this will be the electron donor, or in other words, the HOMO of the diene will interact with the LOMO of the dienophile. But it, if you can somehow change the electron density by incorporating electron donating groups to the dienophile and electron withdrawing groups to the diene, then an inverse electron demand Diels-Alder reaction can be proceeded. This reaction is highly regioselective and also it's uh, highly stereospecific. Uh, we will talk about its selectivity and specificity in another video. Till now, this is it for Diels-Alder reaction. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more named organic reactions in the upcoming videos.